Hello everyone, I'm Vern Friedlander from Bannister Lake, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar. Real-time data has never been more important for both editorial, storytelling, improving production workflows, and for creating exciting new business opportunities in broadcast, streaming, and digital signage. We're thrilled to have you with us and look forward to telling you more about Chameleon, our real-time data aggregation and management solution. Today we want to focus on how Chameleon and real-time data work together to drive on-air branding. This includes snipes, full-frame coming up boards, promos, sponsorships, and bugs. By connecting branding elements to data, broadcasters can leverage automation to create more efficient workflows and drive new revenue opportunities. Before we begin, just a bit of housekeeping. First, we have a quick internal anonymous poll to learn more about our webinar audience. We'd like to learn more about which sectors of the industry you represent. So if you could take a minute to answer this poll question, it's strictly anonymous for internal purposes only and will not be shared. Thank you. We welcome your questions about the product and the editorial workflow. There will be an opportunity at the end of the presentation to answer any questions you may have about Chameleon. As you watch the presentation, please feel free to submit your questions using the Q&A tools on your screen. Simply type your questions and submit. We will also be making a recording of this webinar available to you and posting it on our YouTube site, youtube.com backslash Lake one as in the number one, so you can review the content later. So let's begin. Here is our colleague, Bannister Lake's Director of Business Development and Project Management, Danny Lubisik. Welcome to the Bannister Lake webinar series, where we'll be focusing on our flagship product, Chameleon. First, if you don't know us, well, we're basically a Canadian software company. We've been around a long time, since 94 in fact. Now you may not have heard of us, but you've likely seen some of our work. We're the behind the scenes guys helping broadcasters with their real time data needs. From news, sports scores, social media, elections, polls and results, weather, and so much more. Odds are you've seen our data even if you didn't know it. In today's world, real time data has never been more important. Audiences everywhere are watching from every kind of device and they're relying on getting news and information that is fluid because, well, life changes fast. That's why Chameleon is the perfect solution to help you make sure your audience has the most up-to-date information no matter what platform or device they're on. Chameleon is a powerful web-based product that aggregates real-time data from a wide variety of automated sources and paid services. In addition to these automated sources, Chameleon lets you enter your own data and content. Both automated and manual data can then be managed and moderated, allowing users to customize their content and output messaging. Ultimately, Chameleon is your one-stop solution. Whether you need to cover news, sports, elections, in venue and event signage, even electronic sports, sometimes referred to as eSports. Now, while the primary delivery mechanism for Chameleon is graphic output, populating graphic templates with our real-time content, that is, Chameleon, as per its name, has the ability to blend into any data-thirsty system. How does it do it? Well, non-graphic devices, anything that can read XML, RSS, JSON even, can pull aggregated and moderated content from Chameleon through something we call Blade. No, not Wesley Snipes. Blade stands for Bannister Lake Active Data Exchange. Anyways, this is how Chameleon and you and your broadcast can share any of its data. Maybe feed the data to your website, for example. Nerdy? Maybe, but we think it's cool. While we've been mostly used in broadcasts for news of all types of content, Chameleon is growing in other markets like digital signage and even streaming markets like OTT, uh, also known as over-the-top broadcasts, supplementing all of these with its real-time data. 
Elections are by their very nature data centric and chameleons had some special features and tools for these occasional but super important events. Real-time data has become an essential editorial ingredient for virtually every platform and Chameleon can help you maximize the wealth of information that is out there through its easily accessible and intuitive solution. Branding has been a part of broadcasting from the very beginning. No matter what devices viewers watch on today, could be traditional TV, tablets, laptops, mobile phones. No matter what medium we produce and deliver on, traditional SDI, IP workflows such as NDI or HTML5, we will always need to identify or brand that broadcast, that product, so viewers know what they're watching. The most fundamental branding element in broadcast is affectionately known as a bug. It identifies your network or channel. It's either full or semi-transparent, and it always sits over top of your video content. Some of the fancier bugs may actually even include additional information. But bugs aren't the only branding element. For example, coming up next, or anything to do with the programming data that's on your channel, so the programming information for what's coming on next. Now, whether the branding element is full screen or even partial screen, such as a lower third, these are considered snipes. You can also utilize branding elements, which we refer to as bumpers. These could be elements that appear again either as full screen to fill in some time or again to identify the programming that people are watching. Of course, with strong brands come the opportunity for sponsorships and the ability to put in some advertising. These elements also fall into the branding category. So how do all those branding pieces come together? To look at an overall workflow diagram, we can see here that we have Chameleon in the middle of our branding solution. At the top, we have our various users. Chameleon uses a browser interface to interact with, so users don't need a dedicated workstation or have to sit in front of a, a particular studio. As long as they can remote into the network through a browser, they can manage programming, change um, assets, program snipes. Over on the left, we actually see some of our um, other branding elements or data that we might see in a broadcast situation, uh, such as traffic systems where programming information as well as sponsor and some uh, advertisement information might be entered. Chameleon will ingest that data. This is how it knows that programming data and information. Chameleon will also obviously allow uh, additional programming data to be stored within it. Um, a lot of traffic systems may not support some of the elements that we'll soon see Chameleon does. Once all those elements are ingested into Chameleon, Chameleon will be listening to automation to trigger either broadcast players, um, and as you can see here at the bottom of the diagram, uh, also web or NDI output, um, as well as, of course, uh, data destinations. Uh, Chameleon makes available the programming data as well as ASRUN logs uh, available in an XML format for um, other business systems within your network to collect that information, and possibly provide billing and invoicing. Before we can begin to display branding elements, of course, we need to first create the graphics, and we can do this inside of Chameleon Designer which we see here. At the center of Chameleon Designer is my canvas. Uh, canvas supports a variety of resolutions um, from SD to HD uh, to resolutions beyond HD. So we can do some digital signage uh, applications as well. Uh, what you see with a blank or beginning of a scene is, of course, a given scene. I have uh, my text object that I have on my canvas. Uh, here on my canvas, I can add other objects, such as a quad, which could be a logo or a background texture. Uh, if interested, of course, I could also embed uh, objects, so I can have active or embedded objects 
uh, potentially has some branding elements. And that's what my main canvas is. As I drop elements on my main canvas, and including this sort of group one that we see here, it builds my object list, which I see down here on the bottom left. Um, we can drag various uh, objects into the into a group which will help us animate later so that that way instead of individual animations we can animate the group and keeps these elements together when we're moving them around. On the far left you can actually see my scene list growing here. So here's where I have a scene. I can add additional scenes. While I'm working on a given scene I can actually hide a previous one that I was working on. So I have a fresh scene. I can hide the previous one so that, that way as I build my project I can have them all out and not have my canvas cluttered with various scenes. As we are building branding elements for this particular project, key to each of the scenes is to highlight or label the branding element as an asset. This identifies to Chameleon what uh, type this element is, branding versus ticker. Scenes, of course, can be full screen or can actually be different sizes. So even though we're working at an HD resolution, we can actually create, for example, bugs that aren't full screen, but simply a portion of the screen and then position them in there. And that's all done within the scenes. Elements that are on our canvas um, uh, as part of our scenes, of course, uh, have properties. So here I've selected a text object and over here on my right hand side, you can see uh, properties for the text object, including um, the font that I'd like to choose, uh, Chameleon Designer, and we use uh, Google. Uh, fonts, so of course there's no shortage of the uh, the font list for um, what to choose from, and here of course we can set all the different font properties. Beyond that, some text properties such as word wrap, uh, letting, and the various spacing. Down on the bottom right, we have of course the materials manager where we can. Um, add logos, individual materials, add a folder so that we can quickly build out um, our graphic designs. Here I've loaded a completed branding project so that we can see what one looks like with a little bit more content added to it. Uh, again, populated different scenes on the left side. Uh, paying particular attention to the object list. Here, for every object that uh, I have where I want to actually take some of my chameleon data, uh, in this case my programming information, uh, there is a legend, of course, so as all of these are assets, uh, the text object allows you to select, so you don't necessarily need to follow or, um, or read up on the documentation to get all of the valid names to grab branding elements that are found in the Chameleon database. So for programming information, the now represents the program that's on now. If there's episode information, we can include that, um, but typically the name, the duration possibly, maybe some branding or hashtags. The next show in the schedule, of course, uh, next, and then of course you can see the enumeration of um, the two, so that would be the second show in the programming list. So this is how we pull the programming data for what you would want on the top as far as the time and the temp goes. You can also see my materials populated with all the different logos I might have. I can hide a particular uh, scene if I want to work on a different one. So as this example, switching over to my banner scene, where in the banner scene, again, you're going to see a lot of the same elements that we have here. You can see there's three shows that this particular banner asset or uh, uh, coming up next will run through. Each scene in Chameleon Designer has the ability to be animated, uh, so animating how the graphics come on or off. Uh, once you've selected a scene, uh, clicking on the pencil uh, gives you access to the timeline editor. Uh, so here we can select, for example, one of the uh, timelines. So this, for example, will be the in versus the out timeline. Uh, and then here you can see the various uh, properties for each of the objects being selected and on the right here you can see uh, something sliding along on the x-axis for how these get pushed in or out. And that's how we would animate our graphics in or out using the designer. Once we have our graphics 
completed, uh, what we would do in Designer after saving the file, of course, is to publish the project. Uh, the act of publishing the project publishes it to the database, and that makes these assets available for us to now, uh, inside of the Chameleon through the browser, schedule the assets, uh, uh, create new sponsors, uh, review the as runs, uh, and create new bugs and pro sponsors and promos. After publishing our graphics from Chameleon Designer, we can begin to build out our branding assets through Chameleon's browser interface. First, have, let's have a look at the programs that Chameleon would have imported. The program information seen here would typically be, have been imported from your traffic system and would have contained the program duration and possibly even some program rating information. Chameleon takes this a step further. If I open up some of the program information details, uh, we can see here that Chameleon stores additional information such as hashtags. Uh, we can even include uh, uh, URLs, so like websites for various shows. Uh, further, we can create dynamic fields, which allows us to associate or attach any type of graphic element to that particular show. So in this particular case, if I look at show art or fan posters, I can associate a number of different graphics with the different shows that I may have uh, prepared. So I'll select the correct one. Uh, so that this way, whenever that branding element, for example, to show what the current show is to come on, all of these graphic uh, assets to go with the show are already associated so we don't need the graphic department on a daily basis having to recreate these. Uh, Chameleon will store all of this information in with each of the shows and make it available each time. Now of course we'll look to our traffic system for our programming schedule not just the programs but the actual shows. So here in Chameleon we can see the program schedule of um, programming that we have for this particular channel. Now, of course, ideally we're importing from a traffic system, but Chameleon allows us to also build out a schedule manually. So we can create for pick a, a program, for example, select the date that it will begin, for example, for a season and the time of day that that show would begin will, will air. Uh, we can set a reoccurrence to make our scheduling task a little bit easier. So, for example, there could be some shows that might be uh, occurring every weekday. Uh, we can end a show after so many weeks or, you know, end by a certain season or continue this pro show program indefinitely. Chameleon can also contain information for uh, show episodes. So while I don't have any here, we can, for example, select a show in our traffic system. If it had episode information, it would appear here. Uh, so just an example that Chameleon, uh, for purposes of branding, has a lot of your, uh, a lot more than what your typical traffic system would actually uh, contain. The next part of branding, of course, is the assets, all those graphics that uh, we built. How does that program information and how do we, you know, get that into those graphics that we built through the designer. So clicking on assets here as I did, uh, we can see a list of assets that I have available. Uh, so these are ones that we've created already. To create a new asset, uh, simply click on the add new button. And uh, what we can see here is a list of assets that are available here. I'm just going to uh, uh, sort my list in this particular case, I'm going to pick a uh, bug. So we're going to build out a bug. This uh, bug asset will actually contain a, a secondary graphic with the show. So the current show that's on air is going to have um, uh, a graphic that goes with our bug. So I'm going to call this show. Now, there's a difference between bugs and snipes inside of Chameleon, and this is simply the behavior of how the graphic goes uh, off air. If it's a bug, it'll go on air and stay on air. It will require a trigger to come off air. So that's either an automation trigger telling us to come off air or from, a, from the schedule, which we'll see in a second. If this is not selected as a bug, it's considered a snipe. And a snipe simply goes on air um, and then we'll follow the timeline to simply come off. It doesn't need a trigger to come off. It will play, follow to the end of its timeline and then automatically come off. So for bugs, of course, we want them to stay on and hence the requirement to enable this flag. So here I've selected my um, template already. So I'll click save and now I can actually see um, my asset in the list. We're going to build one more asset while we're here. So adding new, uh, what we'll try, what we'll do is 
select uh, one of our banners. So this was one of the banner scenes that we saw in um, the designer that we were working with. So this will be uh, running the next three programs that we have in our program schedule at the banner down below. Again, we have to assign all assets a name. And again, as this is a uh, snipe. I'm not going to check the bug uh, in this particular box. But what you'll see over here is the implicit field that this particular template is pulling in. So uh, it get, again, Chameleon gives you a little bit of feedback. This is the content that the template uh, is looking to pull from Chameleon. So now we have added some assets here in our list to be able to play out. Now comes to triggering. There's, of course, many ways we can trigger assets to go to air. The most typical, of course, being uh, automation triggers. Uh, I don't have automation, of course, running here for the purposes of this demo. Um, so the secondary, of course, most popular way to create or trigger an asset is to actually have it in the schedule. So Chameleon has a schedule where we can schedule assets, uh, so not just listening to automation. Of course, if you already have uh, assets scheduled in your automation, uh, you don't need to repeat it here. Again, we'll support that, but in the event that you don't have an automation system or don't want to use it, uh, you can control that here. So as an example, and this is different, which, although it shows the program information that we have here, we're not scheduling our programs in this particular interface. Uh, here, what we're actually doing is selecting our assets. So here, there's a show bug that we just created. So I will select that show bug to appear. And in this case, I'm going to have it start, and I'm going to reoccur it so it, begin, it runs every day, for example. And what I'll do is I'll have that bug run all day long in this particular schedule, no end date, and I will add it to the schedule. And what we see is that the bug has now been added to be on air pretty much the whole time that uh, the channel is on. However, the, this particular bug will actually use the show graphics. So as the show changes, part of the bug will change to reflect the current show that's on air. One of the reasons why I picked this particular one. If we wanted to use one of the other bugs, of course, we could schedule it for certain parts of the day. Once we have our assets created, Chameleon provides us a number of ways in which we can trigger our assets. On my output at the top right, I have NDI output. Down at the bottom, I have an example of HTML5. Here, what you can see is the asset that we added to our schedule appearing on air, complete with the Battlestar Galactica graphic to go with our bug. While automation is the typical way uh, uh, for assets to be triggered, uh, Chameleon does allow us to trigger directly from our web interface. So in this case, we created a next banner where I can select that particular asset and trigger it right from my graphic, uh, from my browser's interface. In the event that Control Room does not want to use a browser or finds the browser interface um, a little too clunky or slow, uh, Chameleon does support, and what I'm dragging over here to our window, is a um, what we call our branding master, but it's a remote player or triggerer, if you will, uh, allowing me to pick a particular asset uh, and trigger that asset dynamically. Now, of all the assets that we have, of course, uh, whether they're coming up next uh, uh, and the branding bugs that we showed, we were also talking about creating uh, sponsors. If we have a strong brand, we are going to see uh, people wanting to promote their products on, on our brand and uh, sponsorship. And for that here, Chameleon has what we refer to as campaigns. Here in our campaign module, uh, the idea is, of course, that you would first create a client. We can see our clients here. I've created some clients for us just to be able to quickly use. Uh, you can see there's a button here to add a new client where we can add the client information, uh, possibly providing them with a client ID to go along with our billing system. From there, each client would have a campaign. Uh, now, a client can have uh, a, a one campaign, which you can see here for Nike, for example, or Ferrari. There's a single campaign for that particular client. But in the client uh, that I have for my pizza client, they have multiple campaigns. And again, this is just Chameleon's uh, uh, attempt to give uh, 
your clients greater control and knowledge as to um, you know their advertising dollars, uh, when they're spending the dollars, and um, how they're focusing some of that. Um, let's have a look at that through the assets. So when I go back to the main dashboard and I create an asset as a sponsor, I'll go through the same process as far as creating add new. Uh, and then here in this list, I will select my sponsor. So here we can see our sponsor banner. Now the sponsor banner, when we select it, uh, allows us to pick the sponsor that we want to show for that particular uh, uh, one. And what we can do is, of course, we'll have to label our sponsor. And in this case, what we'll do is select one of our sponsor campaigns to make sure that this ad appears. In this case, let's pick the pizza deal. So we do sort of a hot and ready. This particular asset gives us the ability to actually include some additional information. So. Now, of course, we have that asset added to our list. And for simplicity, I'm going to go to the browser's asset triggers and trigger our new sponsor uh, right from here. We called it Tim, although we labeled it as a pizza thing. Now, of course, when a sponsor plays, what we want to do is generate an as run log so that we can track how long a sponsor was on. And again, this is where it goes to a campaign. So for the pizza client, we can track whether they were doing a pickup special and how often it was on air versus their 30 minute special. Now that we've created sponsors, we can go to look, we can go to our as run report. So from the main page, clicking on reports, we can select our as run where we can see the different sponsors that have run uh, and generate a report for when that particular sponsor runs. So here we can see our Tim uh, sponsor that we ran, uh, including information such as what program was on air or when that sponsor aired for what during what programming. So uh, there might be a surcharge uh, for advertisements during primetime programming. Of course, this uh, report can be exported in a variety of formats, a comma separated file, uh, an Excel spreadsheet, but as well, uh, Chameleon offers that data available through Blade. So if your um, system is looking, or if your business or billing system uh, can read from an XML or RSS uh, source or JSON, uh, it can automatically read a URL to retrieve the as run report on a regular basis. Hope you've enjoyed this presentation of Chameleon and Chameleon for Branding. If you have any further questions, please contact us at info at bannisterlake.com. Great. Thank you, Danny. That was a great high-level look at Chameleon for branding with a strong focus on a variety of design and operational possibilities. Now we'd like to turn it over to some questions. So I have a couple of questions. First question, how would the product be used with a station group as a centralized solution where we may have multiple stations to brand differently. Certainly. Um, so with Chameleon and the centralization, uh, when we were looking at our program schedule, uh, the program schedule and the branding assets that we were scheduling was for a particular channel. Uh, Chameleon supports, of course, the creation of multiple channels. So um, in a station group, we would simply create a channel per per output or for per branding channel that you require. Uh, and then all of those can be managed from within Chameleon. So you select the channel that you want to work with today uh, and then set up the assets for that. On the output side, each individual graphic device will just basically be programmed or configured to output the content from a single channel so that that way uh, larger network groups can centralize and sort of capitalize on all of that. Great. Um, and next question, is there a need for custom development to integrate Chameleon into our network traffic systems to, in order to read program schedules and create triggers? It'll depend on the traffic system. Chameleon supports um, already uh, some network traffic uh, uh, systems that we read the logs from. Uh, but in the case where we don't have that, yes, we of course will be doing, we would integrate the development uh, to read from that traffic system. So just have to find out or let us know uh, what your system is to use and uh, we'll basically look at the specs as to what it would take to integrate that into Chameleon. Again, we do have a platform with a handful of vendors already uh, up and running and available. So, but of course, we're happy to grow that by developing uh, additional importers. 
Okay, great. And just finally, I guess more of a comment than a question. Uh, a bug doesn't have to be the traditional um, station ID or network bug. It could, for example, be a QR code, right? And I think some of the Bannister Lake clients use that capability. Uh, certainly. So like even, uh, you know, once you've generated a QR code, it's considered an image. So just the same way that when we were building a pizza sponsor um, and selecting the graphic asset that would go with that particular sponsor, uh, one of those assets, I mean, you're not restricted to just one image. You can create placeholders for extra ones. And one of those could be a QR code such that maybe the QR code is a coupon or something allowing your viewers to scan it in and go directly to a website or to access a coupon or something like that. Uh, so it is just an image at that point, but yeah, definitely a great way to sort of integrate that and you know, use some of the new technology and sort of integrate it with our traditional branding to get more. Yeah, terrific. Yeah, it's a great way to uh, introduce interactivity uh, into a broadcast. Um, so thank you for your time, Danny. Th thank you for your uh, questions. Uh, we want to thank everybody for joining us today. Today's webinar was the last in our recent series, and we hope that you will You've enjoyed it and had an opportunity to learn more about our community product. We're going to have more webinars in the coming weeks and we will keep you posted about them through uh, our email and uh, newsletter. Uh, also, um, just a reminder, real-time data unleashes incredible benefits to broadcasters and media producers. Audiences come to depend on up to the second news and information content and media executives are always looking for new innovative ways to extend their brands and generate new revenues. Chameleon provides a path to accomplish both. If you have any questions or would like to request a personal demo, please feel free to contact us at info at Thank you.